Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. I'm Dave Ackley. This is the 17th T Tuesday Update. Let's get going. There's three weeks to the episode 20 deadline. I'm not exactly sure at this point what we will have to show uh, for the episode 20 deadline, but it's possible that we will have uh, all of the inventory uh, either in flight or arrived, and it's possible we will have the manufacturing order out and going. Uh, we will not have the actual grid in hand because there's a lot of dependencies that I'm pretty sure will not be satisfied by then, but uh, the manufacturing will be either going or close, I hope. Last week, we were deciding uh, which circuit board, which PCB version to make the golden board. We ordered 200 of them. I expected that to be in uh, before uh, this episode today, uh, and I was looking at software stuff. This week, I'm I've, I've been kind of procrastinating a little bit, but mostly I've been playing with 3D printing, which is a wonderful way to procrastinate. Uh, um, so uh, what I want to make sure and do is put myself on the record that next Tuesday, the next T-Tuesday update, 2-17, uh, um, I will demonstrate software moving from one tile to another tile through the intertile connectors. Uh, um, I feel like I've been kind of shying away from that because, I mean, sometimes there's a lot of design that needs to happen in order to get something done, and, and there's a lot of choices, and so I, I sort of push on it a little bit, and I don't like, like anything, and I've been in this stage uh, of development before, and at some point you just have to say, okay, well, I'm just going to implement something and figure out uh, why it's bad <laughs> when you go, because it's always a matter of trade-offs and really unless you've done it very small you've done it before or it's a very simple project you really can't figure out all the trade-offs ahead of time without actually trying it so uh, uh software will move next week uh, uh or you need to be ragging on me all right uh, um uh, so, I was expecting the circuit boards to ship. In fact, they shipped on Wednesday, uh, uh, right after last T-Tuesday update, and I started as, whoops, I started watching, as I always do, uh, uh, watching uh, the DHL uh, shipment uh, go. It was, uh, uh, you know, uh, Wednesday they they announced it. Uh, Wednesday it was picked up. Uh, uh, well, Thursday it was picked up. Thursday it went to Hong Kong. Uh, from Hong Kong it, it went uh, around and around. That was still Thursday. On Friday it went to uh, L.A., which is where it typically goes. <laughs> and then step 13 I had not seen before, shipment on hold. What did that mean? I don't know. I, actually, I don't know. <clears throat> but that was Friday, uh, which, uh, by the way, was officially the uh, delivery date uh, by end of day, and, and that did not happen. And in fact, it just kind of went around one place to the other uh, and sort of hung around L.A. Uh, all weekend long, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, um, and Sunday, finally, it headed out again. Normally, these packages go to Phoenix, and they get from L.A. to Phoenix to Albuquerque to me in one day, which is, you know, always amazed me. But shipment on hold did not amaze me. And, in fact, uh, Monday, <laughs> get a load of this, uh, um, a shipment arrived at incorrect facility uh, uh, in Phoenix. Okay, uh, and it, so it's processed at Phoenix. So I figure, you know, I don't have the tiles. I don't have the circuit boards yet. I thought I would have the circuit boards. Every other interaction I've had with DHL Express, I would have had it. Something's gone wrong here. Get this. Uh, uh, there's one, been one more update since then. Uh, yes, they've gone from Phoenix apparently back to L.A., We'll see if they show up tomorrow or not. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, so we can't. We do not have the circuit boards to look at. I don't know whether I owe tariffs or taxes or if it just you know luck of the draw or what. I don't know. We shall find out. Uh, um, all right. 
But what I really did a lot of uh, this past week is is 3D printing stuff. And 3D printing for me is just wonderful because you, you can tweak it a little bit. You can tweak it a little bit. You can just make it better and better and better and better. You can sync essentially infinite amount of time in <coughs> uh, 3D uh, object design. I showed the rendering uh, a few weeks ago uh, of the current tile. This is the one that was meant to use uh, the old with the notches in the corner instead of the mounting holes. And it had this whole web work of plastic thing that snapped on the back. We had to, I had to redesign that to have to go with the actual mounting holes uh, that were uh, put into the board. Uh, at the time of this, there was a comment from um, Der Strieber 2 uh, saying, you know, get rid of the uh, north, south, east, west things. They're going to not look good. Now, part of that was that in that rendering, uh, uh, they, they really stand out because they look like they're a different color, whereas, in fact, when it actually 3D prints, they're all just going to be black or whatever it is, and they don't stand out nearly as much. But I do take the uh, the question. I mean, there, is there going to be north, south, east, what's on every one of these tiles? It's going to be all over the place. And my response to Distriever 2 was, yeah, there's lots of things that we want to get better, uh, uh, and that, in particular, I felt like the case was sort of just making people under appreciate sort of the difference the stuff that's going on in this thing that is not uh, normal it just looks like i said a toy tablet a little lego phony baloney uh tablet but i want it to read as some sort of cool unit that goes into construction and makes a bigger thing so that was all the stuff that i was wanted to take on uh this week and so here uh, is my my new uh, i3 Mark III uh, uh, printer. Uh, uh, it's been hanging around for a while. But I didn't get it set up until this week. Uh, starting out uh, to print essentially the the current uh, design from before, just minimally changed to support uh, the mounting holes. Uh, uh, and when it was all printed, it looked uh, like this. Oh, we have a new thing. Uh, can go like that. Uh, um, so, if you can see any of that. Uh, um, now, uh, there's a, a couple of key changes in this thing. Now, one of the things that you might have been able to see, uh, well, who knows, back in the rendering, uh, but I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, um, so that was that. That looked okay. Uh, now one of the problems is is that these uh, these are, are regular uh, Phillips head screws, and the screw heads are really quite large. And in particular, in the south, uh, the northeast, uh, where is it? No, the southwest corner. Uh, um, the southwest corner. There's really not a lot of clearance for the uh, screw head and the I was looking for other options there's a <laughs> there's something called a, a cheese head that's a little bit smaller and a little taller because I guess it looks like a wheel of cheese if anybody actually knows what entire wheels of cheese look like and then there are the uh, socket caps that you have to use with a little allen wrench but those are also narrower so uh, I, I did the original one, and then I started messing with it. Uh, um, uh, so right, filling in, uh, again, it looks like it's going to be really dramatic, but then once you see it all done, it's like where did the letters go? You know, you have to get the uh, reflection just right even to see them. Uh, um, I did a version where I made a uh, little cross action, little 45 degree squares all over the uh, the front of the thing to try to get the uh, sort of scaffolding effect, which uh, turned out to be this, uh, um, which is is kind of cool a little bit. And and notice the uh, Durst Reaver too, the uh, are these guys again, the. Uh, in this case, the, the north, south, east, west lettering is gone. And I, I was happy to go with that. I thought that that made sense. Uh, um, and then <laughs> the very first time I tried to mount this, uh, I tried to mount a tile with this next to it, I did screw the thing down upside down. And I was trying to match up the uh, um, something like this, the uh, west header uh, on one of these things, I guess, with the debug header on the other side, which it just doesn't go. Which said to me, well, you know, I don't know, maybe <laughs> maybe the lettering, we don't want to lose it quite uh, so much yet. Uh, and But I did realize that I didn't have to be using the gigantic wide font that I had used originally here. 
uh, uh, for the lettering, I could use a narrower font and maybe get away with both. And so here's a version where I've now tried to go with a much larger whole framework, uh, looking more like struts in a scaffolding. Um, and, and that one, did that, did I have, oh, well, that one's actually currently uh, in use over here. Uh, um, well, the heck, we'll look at it in a second. Uh, um, and I also did some in white <coughs> because white is a lot easier to see what's going on uh, in it. And, you know, it's a funny thing because, you know, you spend time with this and you think, oh, well, it would be cool if you made the, the, the cases look like X or the cases look like Y. But the thing that I really have to keep thinking to myself is, you know, this is the picture frame. The actual picture is what's going on, you know, inside the frame uh, uh, in the movable feast. And we don't want to make the frame pull attention from the picture. Uh, uh, so these things want to be functional and cool and invisible, if that's not a contradiction in terms. Uh, um, so, but this is one where we got the lettering and the struts uh, in the thing, and and it came out pretty good. And now, this is one of my absolute favorite things. This is the typical thing. Now, I don't know if we really saw it before, but when, when these things printed up, it prints two little buttons because the uh, there are two buttons on the thing. There's a, a button down here, which is programmable, just a user button for whatever we want. I'm not even sure what all, what all it'll do. And then uh, there's a button over here. Uh, which is actually a power button. So you can turn it on with this and you can hold it four seconds to power, you know, force, force the power off and so on, just like a typical computer uh, works. Uh, um, and so inside uh, these cases, there are these little 3D printed sleeves that these pins uh, that are these buttons fall in, uh, go into. And it used to drive me crazy because every time uh, uh, you'd uh, turn a case over or try to lift it up, the, the buttons would, the button shafts would fall out of the holes and I'd lose them. So I was always printing extra ones and so on. So this is one of the things that makes me very happy. I went back uh, this week and I redesigned the button shaft so that it has a little a little stick out uh, bump in it and I redesigned the button sleeve the shaft hole that it goes into so that it's open at one end and has a little slot and now when the thing comes off the 3d printer you just take the little button shafts and you pop them in and now yeah now uh, uh, they uh, they'll rattle around but they don't fall out very nice. Um, in addition, uh, right here, this is another thing, um, and it, it sort of makes sense actually because there are two LEDs on the board as well. Well, there's several, but there's there's two. One for the grid power is you know the 12 volt power going amongst all the grids within a power zone, and then there's the uh, is this particular tile powered up, and so there are little LEDs, but the LEDs are way down on the circuit board, and so one of the things you can do is you make a light pipe you know, a piece of, 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 of acrylic in this case that, that is sort of just lands on top of the LED and then goes up to the top. And, and that's what we have here. Uh, um, let's get rid of this stuff again. Uh, um, so, you know, he, once again, here's, here's my two test tiles. Uh, here it is with the scaffolding and the lettering. Here it is just with the scaffolding in black. And so you see, you know, it, it does drop out as we want it to do. Um, but you can see the, I don't know how much with this amount of light, you can see the, the LEDs, uh, uh, and so forth. And again, it's all in the end about the intertile connectors that are going to allow us to put all of this stuff tile after tile after tile. So, uh, the, the trapped buttons, I love <laughs> the, uh, light pipes. That's just, uh, uh, one eighth inch, uh, plastic rod that I'm, I just chop off pieces. You can get official ones that are all rounded and they have better light properties and this and that, but you know, whatever they, they do the job anyway. So that's the case. Uh, um, I, oh yeah, I got a few beauty shots. Uh, it looks good, doesn't it? I mean, 
This is an albino one. Uh, uh, now, I mean, one of the things that I don't know if I've really dwelled on, but that it's important, is that, you know, so here, uh, this intertile connector, uh, which in fact is, which one here? Uh, um, it's, it's east. Uh, the east intertile connector has this slot in it. The uh, northeast one also has this little slot in it, and the southeast one does, but the southwest, west, and northwest ones do not. And that's because there's two different types of connectors here that I call Fred and Ginger. Uh, and that's because uh, all of the transmission lines that go out of a Fred need to become reception lines going in on a Ginger, and all the transmission lines coming out of a Ginger need to become reception lines coming in on a Fred. But what we want to do for the intertile connectors is we want the intertile connectors to just be straight through not to actually have wires turning over and rerouting pins in the connector. So instead we have two different sockets. We have Fred's and Ginger's and the, the constraint is is that you always have to connect a Fred to a Ginger. So one side that has the key on it and one side that doesn't and our intertile connectors are all designed to support that. That there's the, the polarizing key that that would go into a, a Ginger there and this side you can't see the polarizing key but in fact it's on the inside there and that goes to a fret. So in order to make that all work we need uh, uh, oh yeah okay and here, here I am so now in fact these the, what I just showed you are using the the socket uh, Allen wrench socket things they are a little narrower we've got, I got a bunch of them in black they, they look pretty cool yeah, um, uh, and I think with uh, the scaffolding on a black case, uh, uh, I think it's going to look good enough. Uh, it won't it won't draw attention to itself, but it'll be there. Uh, uh, tightening it up. Oh yeah, a and um, can you see it? Uh, uh, right there. We got the the light sensor. So the the this this cutout here in the case, which was designed for the debug header, has now been extended. So, in fact, you do have to be careful when you put the debug header in that you don't put it in one uh, registration off, one pin off. you got to pull it down toward the corner. Just have to be careful. But again, the debug header is expert-only business, so it doesn't have to be quite as robust as the rest of the design. Uh, uh, and there they are just running, which we just saw. Uh, uh, okay, now... Um, and, and here is a, a, a close-up from the other day of what the, the keyed header looks like. Uh, um, here's the thing. Uh, um, this I, I was setting up an order with AliExpress with China uh, uh, for these keyed headers. There are not a lot of them out there. Uh, um, and they have kind of gone out of stock. Uh, now, I think that may just be because we're now into the Chinese New Year's, the Spring Festival, and uh, a lot of the, it seems a lot of the AliExpress stores are, are refreshing themselves and they've lost all of their content and so forth, which I think uh, will hopefully come back soon. But at the moment, I can't order these. And there's going to be this gap. There's going to be this gap in, I mean, some of the some things i mean I, as far as i can tell i don't know where to get these in the united states i don't know where to get these domestically i would have to make some kind of custom order for you know way more than i need uh now again it isn't a hundred percent strictly necessary if we used unkeyed ones here it would be all right this is just an additional level of protection as long as you, you always match up a fred and a ginger between tiles when you're connecting them up you could do it with unkeyed headers and it would be all right but i'd really rather not i mean this is the whole point of trying to make things robust all right uh in the same uh in that spirit though where is it here oh yeah uh, we also had, uh, um, there's now uh, a, a repo on GitHub that shows the 3D printing uh, tiles for, for the, the intertile connectors. This is the one that goes in the middle with data and power called the PD. This is one uh, called the DO for data only. Uh, and the power injector one is, is this thing up here that we were just looking at. Uh, uh, this is a power injector one. It's also an intertile connector because there's no other place to go in with it. A and um, uh, so there it is, the, the uh, 
the, the designs are up there, they're draft, but the connectors anyway are close to done. These is Andy Walpole, Andrew Walpole uses 3D printer and printed up some uh, PDs and, and, and got them to work. Uh, this was all happening in the, uh, the chat room and I am out of time. <sighs> so the next, uh, um, whoops, uh, uh, the next episode will be out in a week. We will have intertile software. You come and check. Thanks for watching.